Wait, did we edit the restream? No. But it's streaming on YouTube, so someone must have done it. <laughs> Maybe AJ did it? I don't know. You I sure? guess we'll find out live. if we are live. Hi, okay. everyone. Hey. Welcome to the WAN Show. <laughs> We're off to a fantastic start today. We've got a lot of great topics for you. We just finished filming Scrapyard War, so in the coming yes. moments, we are going to be giving you all the spoilers. I'm totally yep. kidding. It's going to be like two months before everything's out, but we had a lot of fun. That's what we were shooting all week. No. We'll give you the details. I yeah, had I had no didn't fun. I actually didn't have any fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll talk a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, what else we got going on? Oh, yeah. Yes, AMD's prices are rising, Intel's prices are getting slashed. It turns out competition works, doesn't it? What else wow. we got going on? Uh, there's uh, some Googles getting sued for like a whole ton of money and a whole ton of people are gonna be getting like 750 pounds or 925 US dollars each. What, really? Oh yeah, it's it's huge. We'll talk about that later. Also, wow. uh, duh, 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 Intel, oh, Microsoft, Microsoft dual screen devices. Yeah. They, they they recently had a product launch, or not product launch, yep. an announcement and an thingy. Event. And there's some actually genuinely pretty interesting devices coming out of there. There's some really cool looking stuff. But Microsoft first, has been a fun company for a while. First, cool. let's look at the intro. Whoa. Wow. So, wow. Amazing graphics. Look, it's Luke. Oh, they're helping each other carry that camera. Oh, one of them's not helping. He thinks it's funny. The other guy never noticed. <laughs> You're not that big. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was, uh, okay, I'd be lying if I mean. said there's not a little bit of salt from this season of Scrapyard Wars. That, do you think it's fair it's to say saltiest? this is the most dramatic we've had? And I mean drama in like a salty sense. Salty drama. No. You don't think so? Four. <sighs> Which one was four? Oh, with Paul and Kyle? No, 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 that was oh. five. That was five. Which there was a was fair four? bit there. Yeah, four was, was uh, Bob and Rod. Ah, uh, because that was the only time there's been aesthetic. So there was a lot of chirping because the aesthetic. Yeah, I guess there's that. You know what? We'll, we'll I don't think it guys... was like genuine drama though. We'll let you guys. We'll let you guys be the judge. I don't yeah. know. You guys were kind of dicks. So were you guys. So maybe there was some genuine drama. <laughs> Uh, why don't we jump right into our title topic to start with, just because people seem to like that for some reason. Yes. I can't imagine why. Yeah. So the source here is from Anand Tech. Intel has slashed the pricing of their high-end HEDT processors. That's not to say that the pricing of the CPUs that um, were already on the market are going anywhere. It's just that in much the same way that they used to do, like, Back in the day, when they kind of just released new chips that were faster, just for the lulls of it a lot of the time, it seemed. Yeah. Um, they have come in and they're giving you kind of, you know, something similar for less money or something better for the same amount of money. And schwomp, here it comes. So here's the summary. The astonishingly, stupidly named Core i9-10980XE. Whew. Now that's a, that's a name. That's a... It's something, I don't think it's a name. Because there are actually more <laughs> numbers than there are letters in there. That's a number. Are there? Hold on a second. We got six numbers, we got, uh, oh, we got seven letters. Never mind, it is technically more name than number. <laughs> more, more number now than man. <laughs> Twisted evil. Um, so we get a small base clock, or we, excuse me, we get no base clock boost. Hold on a second here. Yes, we do. Hold on. Blip, blip, blip. No, right, here's well the specs. Uh, we get an all-core boost of 3.8 gigahertz. We get Turbo Boost 2 of 4.6 and Turbo Boost 3 of 4.8, and this is a 165-watt part, but none of that's exceptional. That is very similar to the 9980XE we already had. What is exceptional is that it is now half the price. It is $980 instead of a cool two grand. And I remember talking about this. Back when Intel launched their 18 core flagship, I was like, hold on a second. You guys didn't launch, like you guys didn't launch a new generation. This is not a new, like it is a new flagship. How do I explain this? 
You guys didn't replace, you know, the previous flagship. You guys just, shut up. That was loud. Yeah, sorry. Um, you guys didn't replace the previous flagship. You just like added a new flagship on top of it. Cause thousand dollars was basically the extreme edition price for the longest time. And they were like, LOL, here's one for two grand. And so I'm looking at this going, you guys have, you guys, you clearly haven't innovated. It's, like, You've it's just, a different category. Yeah, you just, you went and took a server product that was like super, super scarce, hard to make. And you made it a desktop product and you just charged way more for it. Like, okay, I guess that's a strategy. If, you know, all of a sudden AMD has Threadripper and you're like, oh, but, but, hold on a second, what do you do? Um, Scramble. So anyway, now that AMD has, and nothing against first gen Ryzen or first gen Threadripper or any of that stuff, nothing against those chips, but they, they were competitive, but they weren't uh, class leading except at the, at the lower end where yes, they were class leading, but only in certain workloads. Now, second gen then is class leading in many workloads and then very close in one of those, some of the ones that Intel has traditionally been very dominant in. So Intel for the first time, I'm trying to remember the last time, cause Intel's one of those companies where a lot of the way they sell product, and you can interpret this however you want. Frankly, I don't care. But a lot of the way that they sell product is not by the specs and the price. And any mature company wants to get to that point. That is, that is a comfortable position to be in, where instead of having to scrap it out, like, you know, you look at, uh, you know, entry-level Android phones, instead of having to scrap it out over who has two more pixels per inch on their display and who has, you know, eight more megapixels on their rear camera or whatever the case may be, you want people to buy your phone because you made it, not because it's like, slightly better, more spec here. You want that that trust yeah. and that- I've that, bought this thing three times in the past. It's worked well for me every time. I'm gonna do it again. So a lot of Intel's sales strategy is not around just like having the, the highest gigahertz. It's marketing, it's uh, building partnerships, it's building infrastructure um, and um, like logistics to actually be able to distribute chips all over the world. I mean, it's all fine and good to have a, a great CPU, but if no one in Europe can get their hands on it at a reasonable price, then that doesn't do you any good. So, so it's all those more businessy, corporate -y things that they've that they're well established and that they're very good at. You know, forecasting, making sure they have enough chips. Although <laughs> it's been a bit of a rough year as far as that goes for both of them. Apparently, but generally speaking, those are things that Intel's been very good at, and they tend to be quite aloof to you know a particular skew that you know, performs quite well and is selling quite well. Like even back when I was at NCIX, you know, AMD would have chips that moved really well. Like I remember the Phenom uh, 720 Black or something like that. This was an unlocked triple core, if I recall correctly, please don't quote me on that. But that thing moved like bilio because um, AMD had lots of cheap motherboard options out there. So you could get a I mean, not amazing, but you could get a feature complete, like a good enough motherboard for like 70 bucks. I remember that. Like 72, yeah. $73, like somewhere in that range. You throw one of these triple cores on there and all of a sudden you've got something that games well enough and it's got like one more core than you were gonna have if you went Intel and it's like, hey, this is, this is a pretty good time, especially kind of at this price point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, at that price point, it was outstanding. And Intel took forever to counter it because they were just like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna like trade pot shots on a skew by skew basis. We're just gonna have a stack and we're going to, you know, market ourselves as a solution provider, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the last time that I can remember them responding this directly to a competitive threat has to be Athlon 64. I mean, and even then, even then, Intel went to market when AMD launched the Athlon FX51, okay? Intel responded with an extreme edition chip. I think it was like a Gallatin Core Pentium 4 uh, with hyper-threading like 3.46 gigahertz, like furnace of a chip. And it was, it was based on their server, something, something like, it was actually kind of a similar response, but get this, it was slower, it wasn't as good, but they priced it on par with AMD's offering. 
as if to make a statement that like, it's Intel, it's our bestest, bestest thing, therefore, you know, it's, it costs that much and people will buy it. And you know what? People did buy it. I remember I used to, I used to spend so much time on online forums, just like um, helping people configure systems because it was a hobby for me. You still spend, oh, not doing that, but you still spend a fair amount. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, but like specifically, <laughs> yeah, like I was yeah. the kind of person who hung out in what was the then equivalent of r slash build a PC and just waited for people to, I was sitting there waiting for people to post what they wanted to do with their system and I'd put together a recommended spec list and then I'd get so, I would argue with people about their configurations because people would come in and they'd be like, I'm gonna buy this Extreme Edition Pentium thing. And I'm like, that's dumb. And they're like, yeah, but I want Intel, I like Intel. I'm like, no, 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 you don't like Intel. Intel is not, uh, 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 there's, there's, they're, they're not emotional. They don't reciprocate your love. They, 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 they're out, and to be clear, AMD is no different. Don't kid yourself. Um, they don't reciprocate your love. You are a customer. That's, that's the relationship here. Yeah. And so you should not be buying what is objectively worse for the same price. And they go, well, it doesn't make that much of a difference. You know, it's like 5% different in this game and 10% different in that game. You'd never notice. And I go, who cares? Why would you ever knowingly get less for your money? Like that yeah. is offensive yeah. to me on such a, such a deep level to go in and like knowingly, eyes wide open, be like, here is more of my money. Please give me less of something worse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This has been a tremendous transaction. Um, but even at the, even at the darkest times, there's some okay. There's some yeah. stuff. If you were trying to evaluate based off of this, has never really been that big of a problem for CPUs. But yeah. if you're trying to evaluate based off of like, oh, okay, I've had experience with their customer support. Or I've had that's experience different. with reliability. That's totally I'm, different. I know, and I know that's not what you're commenting on. I'm CPUs just adding are all on pretty darn reliable. Both AMD and Intel kind yes, of have it mostly Yes, so it's kind of irrelevant it. here. I'm just saying, yeah. in general, some of those arguments can have some validity to it, yeah. but usually no. I just always used to get so mad because Intel would do these things and they would just get away with it. I mean, the number of people, so I was working PC advisor at NCIX when, um, and I'm changing, I'm changing gears a little bit here, when NVIDIA launched the, um, the GTX 480, which was a steaming pile of hot garbage, literally hot. Uh, maybe not literally garbage, but given how many of them probably burned themselves Close into a crisp, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm sure quite a few of them ended up in the electronic scrap heap for like, you know, scrap gold recovery. Um, and I and I would just like, I would just hate that people are like, no, no, I need GeForce. Like people would have legitimate reasons. Like, look, I'm a CUDA developer. I'm like, sure. okay, well then you should probably buy four GTX 480s and cram your PCI Express slots full of GTX 480s. But, have fun. But, uh, you Good know, people luck. who are like, yeah, I'm playing this game or that game, it always made me so mad. It was actually because of my insistence that my position as PC advisor was a non-commissioned position. Because that way I could be free to tell people whatever they actually needed to know. Yeah. And when they asked me, are you on commission? Which many did. Many people asked me if I was it's on commission. It's a valid question. I would always say no, because I wasn't. I did get a monthly bonus for being the PC advisor, but it was a flat monthly bonus. I just got like $300 a month or something like that for monitoring that email address. Um, what else was I gonna talk about? Yeah, oh, just fan fanboys really make me mad. I remember this one time I was doing, I, yeah. I freaked out on stream not that long ago. Oh, like really? actually had close to a breakdown because there was this giant war going on on the stream about Linux versus Windows. Yeah. And I just, I was trying to get it to just stop for so long and it just wouldn't stop. And then I just kind of spazzed a little bit and was like, <laughs> shut up. It's whatever's proper for that situation. It's what, it, they, they both have positives and benefits. And it was funny because not that long after yeah. you released that video. People were so mad about that video. <laughs> like the funny thing is I would love to see the numbers for what percentage of the people who were mad about that video daily drive windows. And to be clear, I know Windows isn't perfect. Yeah. There's problems with Microsoft's data collection. There's problems with 
basic functionality not working. Yeah. Do you remember how long it took them to get the start menu working? It still has 10? some issues, in my opinion. It still has some issues, but remember when it just actually didn't work at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the search is so bad. Yeah. It is shockingly bad. Like, I The am, search is so much better in Windows 7. Holy cow. I am far from an expert programmer. Let's, let's get that out of the way. But I am pretty sure I am pretty sure that it would be fairly straightforward for Microsoft to create some kind of daemon that runs and just indexes every file name of every, and like sorts it by, okay, these are executables. These are probably the most important ones. These are batch files. These are probably less important. And just searches against that. It would be near instantaneous, and it, 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 you can't do it. And so, even when it does turn up the right result, you'll type something in, and four seconds later, it comes up the result. You've got your, it comes up with some like stupid result, and you're about to click the right thing, and it like shifts, it moves, and you click the wrong thing, and you're like, what are you actually doing? I had to. I don't know. Very recently, on my work PC, which is the only computer I work on that is running Windows 10, I even yeah. ripped Windows 10 off my laptop, which now it doesn't even like, some of the Razer stuff is all derped out because of that, but whatever. Um, I typed in mouse, yeah, because I wanted to check something <laughs> with my mouse, and it showed the actual like mouse settings thing yeah. for a second, and then it disappeared entirely, and just nothing was there. Yeah. So I deleted the word and retyped yeah. mouse, and then it showed up properly, and I was like, okay, yeah. where did it search, go? Do you want to search the web for mouse? Yeah. No. Why did it leave? If I wanted to search the web for mouse, I would have opened my Chrome browser and searched the web for mouse. Which is probably already open, because that's how like people use computers now. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah, browsers are I always I remember open. that now. Like, I remember I used to get really annoyed with my mom because like back in the Windows 3.1, Windows 95 days, she didn't understand the difference between minimize and exit. So I would always get onto the computer and it would be super chuggy because oh, she, yeah, had just, everything's, yeah. she had minimized absolutely everything she was doing. And I was like, yo, like my program can't run because you are using literally all the computer's memory. And she'd be like, I closed it all. I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Anyway, where I was going with the fanboy thing is I remember one of the most frustrating systems I ever had to build was on this motherboard. This was like a super niche, um, where is it? Where's the pictures? Come on, Tom's Hardware, what do you, what do you got going on here? Really? I'm throwing this video all over the place, though. Yeah, I know, get right? get that ad. Um, oh, this is... Really annoying. It was this super niche platform, uh, Socket 1207, Socket F. This was. Oh my God, the ads. I Scroll know. up a little bit. D just pause right there. This is all ads. Wow, all this, all this, all this, all this, and all this. Holy is ads. cow. I just, I, swore, I just I had to see that for a second. That is actually, it's almost admirable at a certain point. Oh, uh, <laughs> like they have, they have put, they have crammed more ad in there than I would have thought possible. That, so they need yeah. to be congratulated for that, I guess. Here it is. So this was the, like the stupidest motherboard ever. Can I, can I find a picture of this thing? <laughs> So AMD adapted their server platform, which like wasn't completely dead at the time, even though their desktop was like dying a fast death uh, in terms of competitiveness, and was like, okay, we're gonna go after Intel on core count. And they built this platform called 4x4. So I don't know why they called it 4x4. Maybe it was four PCI Express slots, four Ugh. cores times two sockets. I don't know. Anyway, you could put sure. two quad core, two quad core processors in it, if I recall correctly. And I remember building this system and just like it driving me absolutely nuts because the thing was so overpriced. Is that a 24 pin like mid near? The yeah, the design of the board is terrible uh. because I'm sure they rushed this thing because no one, like they knew. That's rough. Like a few hundred people were gonna buy it. Like nobody was gonna buy this stupid thing. The performance was <sighs> terrible. The power consumption was terrible. And I was just like looking at it going, you know, why, why would anybody buy this? And it was, it was like not, it was not a great board because what tends to happen at the very high end, you can buy a six, seven, eight hundred dollar motherboard 
and get a very, very poor experience because the thing is, the BIOS development that goes into a board is kind of, not quite, but kind of the same, regardless of whether you sell 500 of them, 5,000, 50,000, or 500,000 of them. And so it's like, okay, well, where do we sink the, the little bit of extra polish into? The one that's gonna turn into 500 annoyed customers on the ASUS forum, or the one that's gonna turn into 500,000 annoyed customers on the ASUS forum? Uh, duh, like it's <laughs> usually better to buy the mainstream thing than the super halo niche thing from we've, my experience. We've had experience, yeah, I was just gonna say, we've had experience, or LTT has had experience with that many times, actually. Um, here we go. Especially so. back in the house. I remember that quite a few times. AMD's Quad FX, technically quad core. Oh wait, no, hold on. Each physical, never mind. It was, it was dual cores and then two sockets so that you had a total of four cores. Uh, of course you're dealing with NUMA nodes and like, let's go ahead and have a look at what the performance looked like compared to, um, here's gaming performance. So this was a gaming machine I was building. Like it's just, so I'd have people say, well, it's not that far behind Conroe. And it's like, so what? It is behind and it's a terrible value. Um, where's the power consumption numbers? It's like, just this thing was just such a shart, you know? Performance per watt is literally <laughs> double on the QX6700. And remember guys, this is an extreme edition. This is already a dumb CPU that no one should be buying. Those were, okay, those were given out as Intel Retail Edge program things though. Later. This was still early. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was much later. Because I was gonna say, those ended up being on market for pretty cheap because yes. a lot of people bought them and then flipped them. Much later. And these CPUs, the top end one was $1,000 and you had to buy two of them. <laughs> and it goes up against $1,000 for a single CPU and just gets utterly like destroyed. <laughs> so it just, it made me so mad to like, to build this thing. So this was, but anyway, I'm finally coming around to the point of this story. <laughs> Arrogance. Every company seems to go through this. They seem to have a cycle where they're firing all cylinders and they kill it. And then they just are like, well, I don't have to, I don't have to drop my price. I don't have to worry about delivering great value for the dollar because I can ride on the brand that I just spent the last few years creating. And so AMD did get to sell some of these FX70 class processors for presumably reasonable margin. Although actually I, I don't, I don't actually know that by the time they like develop this thing and market it and then sell like a few dozen of them maybe it was a total loss I don't, I don't know I'm not sure but they get to sell these processors and then people get to like get told they're idiots by their friends for having this stupid computer that doesn't make any sense and then you create like a bad taste like I don't understand why whether it's AMD back when they were coming out of their dominance with FX and got you know, totally destroyed by Conroe and then they're trying to like still charge a bunch of money for it or whether it's Intel with Skylake and Skylake derivatives uh, <laughs> being under pressure for so long not just like immediately reacting uh, and that that Take to heart some of the specific words in that story and apply them to earlier on where he said, like, you shouldn't be a fanboy of whatever. And I also include that to the other team. Like, Intel is not your friend. And, and AMD is not your friend. Also, no. Also, no. They, there's been a lot of marketing around, like, yeah, stick it to the man. But they are also so, the man. We want them to be doing very good because competition is very good, as we also mentioned earlier. But... Yeah. Now I want to go ahead and acknowledge that our title for today's video was a little bit clickbaity because everything that I've said about Intel's desperation is false, pretty much. Intel's not desperate. Something that you guys have to understand is that AMD has made up a lot of ground in the last two to three years, a ton of ground, and it's exciting. And it's causing, it's making game, great gaming PCs cheaper than ever for PC gamers around the world. And it's fantastic and we love it. And if there was ever an emotional attachment that I could have to a company like AMD, it would be that I'm super pleased that they came back fighting yes. hard yep. and that the consumer is benefiting from it. Yeah. But Intel is not against the ropes. Don't kid yourself. AMD made up a bunch of ground. That doesn't mean that their product stack, once Intel just slashes prices, like that was the only lever they actually had to pull to go back to being competitive again. It's not like, it's not like this is an AMD, this isn't an FX bloodbath where they've got the clear performance crown 
when it comes to gaming, and Intel has no response. So we finally have the response, in spite of Intel being, in my opinion, far too slow to react yeah. to it. And that is to take their HEDT lineup and make the pricing sensible. So they have gotten rid of all this stupid stuff that made no sense. Do you remember that quad core? That was on their HEDT socket. What was this? 7740 or something stupid yeah, like that? They had some yeah. really weird So it things. was architecturally a generation behind, but it had like a way higher power delivery limit. And it was like this like overclockers only SKU that they killed in like four months. <laughs> and we, we were looked at we were like, what even is this? What are you doing? Like you're muddying, you're muddying the, the you're positioning. You're already confusing stuff. Yeah. And when they had when they when they started segmenting HEDT by putting fewer PCI Express lanes on them, what are you guys doing? You are literally you're literally lasering off functionality that was on that chip for the sake of artificial product segmentation so that you so that people are incentivized to like buy one with more cores or whatever. No, just let people buy what they actually want to buy. And at least we've finally got a sensible product stack. So anywhere from except four, for the name. Except for the name. Anywhere from four to eight cores. That's on your mainstream platform. Anything from 10 to 18 cores, that is on your HEDT platform. And we are finally back to pricing that I considered outrageous back when they first announced their, their $1,000 Extreme Edition. Or actually, if I recall correctly, AMD did it first with the FX, what, at 51. Um, but pricing that I thought was ridiculous, but now feels like coming back down to earth after yeah. we've been dealing with $2,000 flagship SKUs. So we've got this this very sensible pricing structure where you go, okay, I want more than eight cores. I guess I'm moving to HEDT. We've got nice high boost clocks on all of these, which is great. They should all game really, really well. And you pay basically about a hundred bucks a core, or excuse me, for two cores. As you move through 10, 12, and 14, they killed the 16 core. The conspiracy theory is that's to avoid direct comparisons to AMD. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, to the 3950X, which would be hilarious. That could make sense. And so you're Yikes. paying 100 bucks for another four cores to get the 18 core. The non-conspiracy theory version of that is that maybe by the time the chip is binned high enough for 16 core, it could have just as easily been an 18 core. So they might as well just kill that and take any of the ones that were borderline and move them down and move them up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, well, I like this. I am super happy with this. When 10,000 series, geez, 10, is thousand, out, 10. Uh, I'll be five generations behind. Really? Yeah. You're still running a 5960X? Yeah. Huh. You know, it's funny. I was running a 5960X until like a week ago, two weeks ago. You didn't upgrade? I went to AMD. Oh. That video is coming soon. Oh. Um, speaking of things that are coming soon, uh, our sponsors for today's WAN show. Yeah. Starting with, <laughs> which one? Pulseway. Uh, Pulseway is a fantastic tool for managing your servers or workstations, or basically if you're an IT pro and you want to monitor things and manage stuff and fix problems on the go, it's fantastic. It's compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux, and their single app gives you remote desktop functionality, real-time status, system resources, logged in users, network performance, you can manage Windows updates, and so much more. And it's highly customizable. You can create and deploy custom scripts to automate IT tasks. Um, it's great. Try it for free, you can try it out, see if you like it at pulseway.com or through the link in the video description. Also sponsoring the show today, Squarespace. Squarespace. We use Squarespace, no joke, we actually use it. It's super easy to use. Uh, LinuxMediaGroup.com and LTXExpo.com are both running on Squarespace. And if you haven't heard already, Squarespace, <laughs> come on, you guys watch this show, you've heard about Squarespace. Well, stop putting it off. Go build the website you were planning to build. Squarespace makes it simple. You just choose one of their awesome templates and whether you're trying to make an informative site or one where you can sell random knickknacks online, Squarespace includes e-commerce so you can manage your inventory and orders and all that good stuff. Squarespace is the way to go. They've got webinars, a full series of help guides, and you can even contact their support team 24 seven to get help building your site. So go to squarespace.com forward slash WAN and get 10% off today. Finally, the WAN show is brought to you by private internet access. PIA allows you to browse the internet more privately. It's right in there in the name. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, and Google Chrome. And you can connect up to five devices at once on a single account. So you can get your phone covered, your laptop, 
laptop, your desktop, your work computer, whatever the case may be. Their apps include DNS leak protection and IPv6 leak protection, and probably the most important feature of the apps, the internet kill switch. If you lose your, your VPN connection for whatever reason, it will block all internet traffic. So let's say, let's say you are one of those naughty pirates or whatever else, your torrents won't keep running once your VPN disconnects, which is pretty important so you don't get that notice in the mail. Um, so check it out today at lmg.gg slash PIAWAN. Um, and there seems to be a random extra line in there that is totally irrelevant, something to do with Seasonic. <laughs> I do actually want to announce something else that's, whoops, wrong one. I do want to announce something else that's pretty special. We have a new design. Woo! It's the fanboy design. Oh. Look at me, I'm fanboy. <laughs> oh boy. This is my superhero uniform. It's very nice. Yeah, I'm, that's, what, that's my Halloween costume. I'm going as fanboy. You know what can uh, be kind of interesting actually is a fanboy shirt. <laughs> where you get like a jersey style thing, it just has like tons of company logos on it. That's actually not a terrible idea. Like we're talking like like NASCAR driver yes, level. Yes, hundred percent. Should we do like an LTT, like like it like it's it's so like covered in our LTT. branding? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. To the point where it's like a jersey almost. Because we've we've really moved in the other direction over the last year. Yes. Making actually here, I'll I'll bring up the uh, I'll bring up the store. Because we've you know we've gone after this like stealth branding, like trying to like it only has a little tiny logo here, and then it has the uh, Linus Tech Tips down the arm. But it's like if you're not going out of your way to read it, like it's not yeah. that noticeable. Yeah. And we've tried to make things a lot more subtle, but uh, I kind of like that. Maybe just like a. A, a, a one-off, like an outlier. I've wanted to do, I've wanted to do like a dry fit style shirt, like an athletic shirt for a while. Maybe that would be a good opportunity to do like the just totally well, like, be kind of neat. like esports jersey looking, like horrendous orange and black and white like. I was, thing. I was sitting here thinking like, oh no, what have I done? Until you said the athletic shirt. That's actually kind of compelling. Uh, oh, GPU shirt is also a really new design. Yeah. Honestly, this is my personal favorite. I like that one a lot. Everything that we've done so far, um, especially because like I really when like I first it. looked at it, I was like, "Is it a city? Yeah. Like, what is that building? Is that a specific building?" I was like, "Uh, yeah." I actually, cool. I went as far as to have someone ask me, "Like, is this a GPU shirt?" And I was like, "No, it's just like a skyline." And like I corrected someone and was like very dismissive. I was like, what are you talking about, GP? And then I like, I looked at it later and I was like, oh man, <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, that's really cool. I yeah, like that one a lot. It's really cool. I really like that one. So guys, go check it out, lttstore.com if you haven't heard of that. Uh, what can I do for you, Nick? Also oh, the Elemental promo. Yeah, so four Elementals for... for four Elementals for 50 is back. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a good deal. So, okay, yeah. sorry, I was doing the math wrong. Four elementals for fi I, I, I for, you thought it was two for fifty. <laughs> I think for some reason I had like like our raw like silk screening cost in my in my mind or something like not even including like t-shirts and logistics and fulfillment and I was like. Wait, no, that's not that great of a deal. No, no, yeah. So these are American Apparel <laughs> shirts. They've got uh, they've got our elemental design, which is just like the LTT logo on the chest here. Um, buy four, get them for fifty bucks. Basically, it's like twelve fifty a shirt plus shipping, which is a pretty darn good deal. Yeah. And elemental is uh, going away as of this fire sale. Once this is over, they are gone, and um, good riddance. With that said, I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> to like bring them back like a year from now or two years from now, just like as, and not even try to sell them at full price, just bring them back as like a stupid fire sale item. So there you go guys, it might come back. It won't be for a long time though, so get yours now. Um, they're super comfy. You guys have a lot of stuff on the right. store now. Yeah, yeah a I was, lot of options. Nick and I were talking about it today. I think we're gonna start killing some of the designs. So that's sort of a general thing to be aware of guys. If there's some older designs that you like, um, Make sure you keep an eye on them. Make sure we don't run out of your size. Um, circuit board's going away next. Uh, yeah, circuit board's going to be the one that goes away next. So keep an eye on that. Circuit board. Uh, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The circle logo. That makes sense. I really like the cranberry circuit board one. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah. But that makes that's what clothing brands do. Like, yeah. Makes sense. It does look dated now compared to the newer designs, though. And it does. So it's like, yep, yeah, we're, we're going to do it's with it. It's nice, but it does look yep. a little dated now. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. All right, so in other processor pricing news, uh, demand for AMD yes. processors has reached the point where retailers are now hiking up the prices daily. Our source for Oof. this is kitguru.net and techspot.com. Uh, US pricing lists this chip for as high as $800 on Amazon and Newegg, up from the MSRP of $499. Like, to put that in perspective, that is the same price that the 16 core is supposed to come in at, and that's just the 12 core. Um, that's the, yeah, that's the uh, Ryzen 9 3900X. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Good for AMD and retailers. Uh, AMD confirmed a shortage and announced a delay on the Ryzen 3950X. I believe that was last week. So you know what? That was a controversial thing that I just said there. Yeah, good, I said I said good, good for good for AMD, good for the retailers. Actually, not so much good for AMD because they probably haven't increased their pricing, but it's also not that cut and dried. So, when there is a great product that people want, that is good for the people selling the product. And there's going to be people that are mad. It's more than MSRP. Here's the thing you got to understand. Whether you're buying RAM or whether you're buying computer processors, you are basically buying a commodity. If you don't want to buy a commodity, buy a Mac. They're not a commodity because they build value around the product in other ways. But if you're buying a computer processor, this is one of the reasons that it makes me so mad when people go out of their way to spend more for less because you are buying a commodity item. There is no like, um, you know, it's not like a car where you could, you could pay more for leather seats because you just like leather seats. This is, this is a, a processor. It crunches numbers, yeah. it spits out FPSs or rendered videos, and it does so at a rate that we can very easily measure and compare, and you pay a price for it that is very transparent it's and, a, and out there. It's generally just a price and performance equation. That's, and there, there are, like we said earlier, there's some components that aren't quite that simple, but yeah. So I'm, I'm taking a moment to congratulate AMD and their retailers on for a change for once in the last five years, having something to make some margin on. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that. GPUs were obviously a margin opportunity because I'll tell you guys, the computer retail business is really tough. I've had so many people ask me over the years, you guys have the expertise, you have the industry relationships, you have the facility. Why don't you guys like become a system integrator? Why don't you build systems and like sell gaming systems online? Because we are every bit as capable of configuring a freaking gaming system as many of the system integrators that are out there. Um, and I was like, because I'm not gonna put all the work into building the logistics and the packaging and the human resources management and all of this all of this stuff. I'm not going to I'm not going to dump those resources in to make, you know, 6% net margin if I'm lucky. <laughs> That's bad. That's a terrible terrible business. And honestly speaking, e-tailers particularly e-tailers with pressure from Amazon, with pressure from the fact that there's just nothing hot and new that is supply constrained. E-tailers are lucky to make one to 4% net, like after they cover yeah. all of their expenses. Yeah. And so, you know, opportunities to make margin are definitely great. And the thing is, I know that consumers often get really upset about this kind of thing. They call it gouging. No, gouging is when you have something that people need and you charge far more for it than is fair or reasonable. Some people need processors. So, do they need this one? No. Okay, then buy something else. Gouging is when you know that you know, your, your competing dairy farm or whatever had a flood and you quadruple the price of milk. Or uh, milk's maybe a bad example because people probably shouldn't drink as much milk as they do. Uh, let's say, let's find something that's actually more necessary. Water. Sure, sure. Controlling the supply of water. Controlling the supply of water and up. charging more for it than you, than you reasonably should need to. That is, that is gouging. Gouging, like, let's think about what the word means. It's like, it's like, it's vicious. It's like, it's cutting. Um, you, you don't need a gaming CPU. In fact, if Scrapyard Wars taught us anything this season, it's that you can get a great gaming experience. You've been getting Xeons for tons of Scrapyard Wars. Yep. Like there's, there's, there's... There's deals out there. Yeah. Absolutely. And you don't need, nobody, nobody lives or dies by getting a 3900X. And so I guess I just, I just don't really care that much because I'm also in the same camp that doesn't pre-order games. 
and yeah. doesn't pay full price for games. Yeah. Because you know what? In the grand scheme of things, I'll pay however much I'm comfortable with, and it will come down to that price eventually. Or it won't, and you just won't get or it. Or it won't, and I just won't get it. And that's that's how capitalism works. Like, <laughs> anyway. So good for AMD. Oh yeah, so how AMD benefits from this is that instead of running out and working with game developers to bundle free games with their processors or their GPUs or whatever else, those aren't free. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you get a free game with your graphics card, um, that's not free. And actually, in the old days, they used to be super cheap, like the game codes for NVIDIA and for ATI at the time. Uh, my understanding is they used to come very cheaply because the argument that was being made was that these graphics card uh, companies and Intel used to do them as well. Uh, uh, in fact, my copy of Supreme Commander, I only got that game because I got a free one with my Intel CPU. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. That's I used to try to flip streaming. the games. Yep. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a good strategy. I used to do that all the time. Um, but anyway, they used to be cheap because the argument would be made that, hey, we're promoting your game. Yeah, advertising for and it. And not stuff. that many people buy a new computer like specifically for a game anyway, so probably most of the people that are interested in your game are going to have to buy it, <laughs> and we're effectively giving you a, a great promotional vehicle for it. Well, the game companies stopped buying that line and started charging quite a lot more for them. So I remember negotiating deals with suppliers being like, well, hey, you know, like, honestly, we just need a better price. Like, you're not priced to performance competitive. How am I supposed to sell this thing? And they go, well, we've got these games. And I go, well, I don't care about these games. And they're like, well, unfortunately, this is a deal we've negotiated. And it's like, you know, between the two games, it's like $18 or something on our cost. I'm like, what? Oh, holy crap. Like, you guys are actually <laughs> paying, like, a lot for these games. And a lot of the time, they're hot new games. And these are like $50 games for nine bucks a pop. Like, it is a good value, but only if you were going to buy those games or you have the savvy and the time to turn around and flip them. Yeah. So it's good for AMD in the sense that they don't have to run around and, like, you know, work on these promos in order to get their product to move. Um, I really hope that TSMC can uh, get their stuff together. Apparently one of the reasons for the shortage is that TSMC tripled their lead time for seven nanometer chips from two months to six months um, because you know it's great if more people have awesome processors at a great price and once the lead time comes down, once their capacity goes up, the prices will fall. But in the meantime, you will have to pay a little bit more. The, uh, the, the nice thing, I guess, is that at least if you want an Intel CPU, um, you can get a 10-core one of those for, how much was it again? Just under. Th Ooh, wow, I'm super not in that tab anymore. Yeah, Whoops. I don't How much is a new 10-core? 590 bucks. So you could actually get an Intel 12-core for 689, which is a perfectly reasonable option. The one thing that's going to bite you a little bit there is watch out for motherboard pricing, because uh, Intel's X299 platform is substantially more expensive on the motherboard side than if you grab like, uh, like a well-built B450 board or something and throw a 3900X on Another, it. I'm going to bring up the Scrapyard Wars thing again. You probably don't need that either, though. Just to, <laughs> yeah, you probably don't need it. Just to be completely clear. But if you do need it, but if you do, work, that's great. <laughs> At yeah. least we have uh, the Core i9 10920X <laughs> oh. to look forward to. It's so robotic. And I know, like, you played into that, but it's still, even if you didn't, it's still robotic. You know what I wanted them to do? I wanted them to just... Actually, I don't know what I wanted them to do, but this was terrible. They should. <laughs> what they should have done was what NVIDIA did. They should have done a reset. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have been following it for this long, but NVIDIA's cards used to be um, four digit numbers and then a suffix. So it was um, like your your 6800 GT or GTX. 8800 GTX. Your, yeah, your 7900 GTX or 7950. That was like a weird little small incremental bump. Anyway, uh, so they got up to the 9800 GTX and everyone kind of speculated, what are they going to do? Um, you know, are they gonna are they gonna do like this goofy five-digit number? And thankfully, Nvidia, while I didn't necessarily fully agree with their naming scheme, uh, had the good sense to not do this, and yeah. they they came up with the 200 series. So they actually went they why, went why down to like three 200? numbers. I'm interested because I thought it was all right. What about 100? Oh, okay, well, yeah. Where, what happened to 100? Okay. What happened to 300, but NVIDIA? Like, you where, did, <laughs> where did those numbers... What happened to 800? Well... Where did all those numbers go? We kind of know what happened to 800, the mobile stuff. 
Yeah, but like it was still dumb. I agree. But uh, so I I thought you meant like within the stack, not the actual starting. Number. Like if you're gonna skip numbers, at least skip numbers I can kind of explain. Like if you had skipped four hundred, I could have been like, okay, I don't know. They they don't want to spook like superstitious Chinese buyers or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know. I was actually kind of surprised that they skipped one and eight and not four because I, like, I was expecting that jump. You know what I mean? But oh well. Whatever. Okay, I'm very interested in this. Okay, sure, hit me. In in your opinion on this, because you've been using a flippy dippy phone. Oh yes. For a while now. Boop. Pretty cool. Nice floppy phone. I actually absolutely love it. It's buggy. Like Android Auto on this thing is terrible. Interesting. Yeah. Why? I, I don't. Because probably because it's just not getting the same level of software. Pol it's the whole niche product thing. It's like yes, this is a two thousand dollar phone, and like therefore I should be getting the best experience. But if you're smart, you run out and you buy an A series or you buy the S, whatever, and you're actually going to get your software updates in a. This is Samsung we're talking about. Relatively, <laughs> um, you know, reasonable time frame. Like if you're expecting this which is this like weird experimental device to get the same level of polish and the same kind of long-term support as a normal phone, you are out of your flipping mind. Um, but I really like it. I like a lot of things about the experience. And the idea of having more screen in front of me is just like, look at my business calendar. Yeah, it's really awesome. Is that not amazing? Like, I have so much space to work. Or like, that's really awesome. From a from a like, I, I actually haven't played a single game on it, so I have no idea how good that experience is. But um, you know, Team Viewer. Okay, so firing up like an actually decently usable amount of space. Yeah, like here. Let me just uh, let me just bring this up here. Careful. But, yeah, don't worry. I'm I'm good. It's just my desktop upstairs. Yeah. So I have a, a like a mega ultra wide monitor on my desk. Um, and normally, when I log in from my phone, which is usually vertical, because that's sort of how I'm using it most of the time, um, because otherwise, like the keyboard's unusable and stuff. So normally, like I can't even see that much stuff. But like, uh, hold on, let's, let's find a different uh, browser tab. There we go. Like that is a lot of that is a lot of browser to be able to see. You know, I have a black desktop background, so you know. Yeah, you can effectively see the whole yeah. informational like, part of the like site. Like that is like it's like really usable. Like I can really do stuff. That's pretty You know, pretty bring up my keyboard, and I still have like a kind of monitory looking size thing. Like I, I absolutely love this thing from a productivity standpoint. Um, like email. Oh man, I showed Luke this and he just about creamed himself, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so check this out. So, uh, uh -huh. okay, I'm just gonna, I'm, no, no, I'm just gonna go to a stupid inbox, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. So here we go. So here's an inbox I don't care about. Watch this. Oh well, it's the tablet view. It's a little hard to see, but yeah. you have like all of your, your different emails on the left and you can read the email on the right and it's like still more space on the right than yeah. you normally have. I, it's pretty wicked. I really like this thing. Okay, so more screens in the pocket. I am officially on board that train. Let's talk about their uh, Microsoft's new dual screen devices. Yeah, okay, it's huge. That's the main thing I want to get your input on because you've always been a proponent for smaller phones. And now you have a small phone that turns into a giant phone. But this thing's like kind of always giant, I think. Uh, this link was to the wrong thing. Uh, da, 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 da. the v yeah no okay that's the laptop thing yeah hold on I think I clicked the wrong one Surface Duo smartphone here we go all right so let's bring this up there's yeah there's a picture of her holding it right at the top there we go so it's big they bailed on the idea of a folding display but they've gone ahead with a folding phone Hinged. I love that it's Android. I, I have to give Microsoft so much credit for having the stones, yeah. or having the—I don't even know what to call it—the humility, the, 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 the something. Self-awareness. To ju yeah, to just go okay. Our strength is in software as a service now. Um, you know, it's in building. We're using Microsoft Teams now. Here, it has issues. To be very clear, I'm not necessarily recommending it to anyone, but like, to to building software that runs on hardware, and but then also building hardware, but then now building software that runs on other people's hardware and software. Like, they're they've just they've shown 
a degree of fluidity that I feel like the Steve Ballmer Microsoft did not have. They went from a huge amount of derpy devices that I think were mostly just fun to laugh at and like question like- well, What was that think, derpy? People love the Zune. Okay, yeah, no, the Zune was amazing. I loved, the Zune software was incredible. I never actually owned a Zune. I had no money at the time. Especially because it was up against iTunes, which at the time was, it, maybe it's better now, but, but like even if iTunes didn't garbage. exist, yeah. Zune software was fantastic. I loved it. I use it as a player on my desktop all the time. I mean, kind of a little bit after that. Right. They had, they had a lot of derpy stuff coming out. The Windows Phone was just awkward and all that jazz. But in the last little while, they've been kind of fun. Surface headphones, oh wow. They're surprisingly really they're, good. They're okay. They're good. Yeah, they're they're solid. fine. They're I, not like I the wouldn't best. buy them. Yeah. No. Like I wouldn't buy them because they aren't the best for the money. Oh, oh wow! Thinking. Amazing. What a surprise. But if you're into the aesthetics or the comfort or whatever, it could yes. be a solid option. And the controls are cool. Yeah. Um, and then like their laptops have been getting better. And then this is like interesting. But yeah, you're the only person that I know personally that's been using Flippy Phone. Yep. Galaxy and this Fold. is. <laughs> Pretty, I just mean the concept. Ah, yes. And then this is pretty different, I think. Because it's using just one of these screens, I know it flips all the way around, mm -hmm. but that's still going to be kind of hard. So here's my sort of, you know, bummer take on the Surface Duo. Um, I think it definitely has a market. One of, yeah, it definitely has a market. But one of the things I like about the Galaxy Fold, feel this, hold it. Yeah, that just right. feels like a phone. It feels like a heavy chocolate bar. Yep. And when you're using it as a phone, it's great. And what's cool about yeah. the way that they've designed it is that everything functions exactly as you'd expect. There's a selfie camera here that you can use to take selfies, and the rear camera is here, just like on a normal phone. You want to, like, turn on your flashlight. Oh, yeah, okay, good. It's in the right spot, regardless of whether I'm using it flipped open or whether I've got it closed. Okay, you know uh, your volume and all of your buttons. It's a noticed, little awkward. I have noticed that you use the small screen a lot as well. Yeah. I've seen it with you with it open too. I'm not saying you don't use either, but yep. like you use the small screen quite a bit. If I want to do something quickly, everything is here, even if it is a, a little on the small side. Like if I need to make a phone call, I will I will make a phone call like this. Um, that doesn't look as usable to me. Yeah. When I when I don't need you know, the full experience. And what I've really, what this device has done that nothing has really done for me in quite a while is, that, is it has changed the way that I use my phone. I don't just like, because this small screen is functional but not particularly enjoyable to use, I find myself not just idly whipping out my phone and like looking at it for no reason anymore. Because it is a little bit more effort to is that a good thing? unfold it. I actually do consider that, to, for me personally, I consider that to be a good thing. I don't want That's that what I'm, compulsive I'm, behavior yeah. to be any more compulsive than it is. Like it's, so for me, it's like there's, there's two things that I do with my phone. Something that's like quick and I don't need to unfold it, but with purpose because I'm not doing it for fun. Uh, or something where I really want to get more done. Well, now I can do that. So it's like, is it worth it to invest the extra time to unfold it and like really do something? Like, am I focused on a task right now? This is amazing. And if I'm just like not really doing anything, making that less fun, I consider being to be a very positive and thing. And much more intentional. Yes. So there's- It's there's, not just uh, whatever, you have to flip it open, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's, there has to be an intent to when I use my phone That's with That's an interesting thing. side effect benefit thing. Um, and some people might not like that. Maybe you like just the like, you know, the convenience of just being able to like pull out your phone and, and do stuff. And like that, that's great too, but, and to be clear, you, you, you can do that. It just does take a little bit longer. Uh, something that I've been really liking on this I is saw that eBooks. Actually. Yeah. Um, like that is, I basically have a Kindle in my pocket because the OLED display, it's not super fatiguing. You go, you throw the blue light filter on, you turn the brightness down. That's something that I was really disappointed in with the ROG Phone 2, was that while it's got HDR and 10 bed and blah, 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 one of the things that I really need out of a mobile display is a super dim screen. Right. Like the capability to go super, super yeah, dim because yeah. I often use my phone at night. Um, and this one goes so dim that I can comfortably use it 
to read ebooks. Yeah, wow. Like that does not, that doesn't bother me at all, even at night. Yeah. Like I would have to turn this up to read it during the day. And so it's like. It's a little too bright here, but I could definitely see how yeah. that would be I mean, totally we're serviceable. Under, we're under studio lights, yeah. so it's not really fair. Yeah. But like I could use that like that oh, for a very long time without yeah. any noticeable fatigue. Yeah. Um, the fold is super noticeable, but also it kind of goes away when it matters most. So if I'm like watching a full screen video, I don't really notice it. Um, whereas if I'm like looking for it or there's bright sun behind me, yeah, it's there. I don't know. I'm, I'm really happy with it, but so right. So back to the, uh, my review of that is coming by the way. So back to the Surface Duo. Um, I see the, the, uh, the inconvenience of using it one handed as being even greater than this one. I think that's kind of a bummer. Yes, definitely. Also, one of the biggest reasons that I'm so jazzed on the Galaxy Fold is having that gigantic canvas for, for doing tasks that are typically difficult on such a small screen and having a bezel down the middle, yeah. I think is gonna be a bit of a drag. I'd get over it. And depending on pricing, it might make a ton of sense. Like I'm sure that's gonna be more cost effective and more reliable than the Galaxy there's, Fold, which has been plagued with issues. Yeah, there's, there's specific things that doing it on that device would be wonderful. Yep, especially if you're multitasking. Well, yeah, that like being able yeah. to have the Floatplane website or app up yep. and messing around in that while talking to people would be glorious. So I was having issues getting connected to my carrier and I needed to copy my APN information over. And it was like, so amazing having a giant screen, yeah. just split screen, copy, paste, copy, paste, woo! So I'd awesome. Be like switching windows on the previous one or even just typing it in on the one side while you just look at, refer to it on the other side. And this would be great for that. It feels kind of related to when the world sort of started shifting to having a whole bunch of tabs open instead of constantly making new windows and closing windows and all this kind of stuff for when they're web browsing. Because having all these tabs open and like splitting them out and having multiple browsers up, you can copy things back and forth more easily. I don't share Microsoft's vision for some of these things. I don't see that being a great gaming experience personally. Um, no, yeah, that, that was a weird photo when I saw it too. But I love it. I love it from a productivity standpoint. And I am super excited just in general to see Microsoft and Google uh, working together where it makes sense because one of the biggest arguments for the Apple side of things is ecosystem, ecosystem, ecosystem. And realistically, I don't think Chrome OS is coming after Windows anytime soon. And realistically, Microsoft's mobile operating system ambitions are dead and buried. Yeah. So if you wanna not be in the Apple ecosystem, you need integration between Google and Microsoft, and you need that experience to be more seamless. And they are, it seems to be, this is not the only way. I'm trying to remember what the other thing that happened recently was. Uh, oh, right, just using Android on Windows, like getting your notifications on your Windows machine. Um, like, it seems to be that they're moving in the right direction to finally take the fight to Apple in that regard. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really excited about it because it was kind of cool being in the Apple ecosystem for a bit. I switched to AirPods, I switched to the new iPhone, and I switched to um, the Are Apple Watch. Are you out now? You're done? I'm, I'm out now because they just, they still haven't fixed basic stuff that is very meaningful to me. Um, like you, okay, let's see if I still have any notifications left on this thing. Oh, it's locked. Oh, one sec. There we go. Okay, I don't have any notifications left on it, unfortunately, but you still can't read an entire email on it. It's like, okay. <laughs> how, how useful is that then? Yeah. Um, and there's just certain things where it's like, if I'm the kind of freak that wears a smartwatch, I don't care about your activity monitoring, falling down monitoring. Like, I, I don't care about that stuff. I just want my notifications fast. I love that it has an always on display now. That makes a big difference to me, but just, it's not that polished. Notifications. We were talking about this before the show. Notifications yeah. like kind of suck right now on both sides. And not just notifications, opinion. but like meaningful interaction with yes. them. Yes. Like I almost want to make a video. Maybe I should make a video about Mark as Red. That is the most important thing that I need to be able to do with a notification. And almost no apps support it. For some reason, Google's SMS app is one that does support it because uh, verification codes, as far as I can tell. Like, I think that's why they implemented it. 
But I don't know why absolutely uh, Teams supports it, which is nice. Yeah. But I don't know why absolutely everything doesn't have support for it. I don't want to open the app in order to not have it be bolded or not have it have a you know, dot next to it or whatever the case may be. Yeah. This is irrelevant. It's someone messaging me back saying, thanks, or something like that. I never want to see that again. And so people often give me a hard time about my notification tray being like full of stuff. And it's like, yeah, because it's the only place that I can leave them. If I swipe it away, I'm not 100% sure what the app's behavior will be. Yeah. I, I can't mark them as red. I, I just, like, it's just, it's difficult to manage. And one of my biggest frustrations is reminders. So Apple's new reminders app is way better than the Android situation. Luke and I both have frustration with reminders on Android. Couple things, so one. Pretty serious ones. Is you, is you, you can't, I mean, you could throw custom ringtones on your device, but there's no reason you should have to do this. You can't set a continuous ringing ringtone for your reminder ringtone, which is baffling to me. So you only get like ding, 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 ding. ding. Like you only get these little short. It should ring until I answer it. This reminder is probably very important. I set a reminder <clears throat> so that I remember to do something, not so that I get a little, a polite little doo -doo. You know, like, like I have to when I set when I set the time for a reminder, I have to try to be conscious of like, will I be on my phone at that time? Yeah. Because if not, I probably won't see it. And if you get a lot of notifications, they uh, honestly, I don't even like hear them. Yeah. I don't even feel them a lot of the time because yeah. it's just I'm kind of Too numb many. to them. Yeah. Um, and the other issue is that you get this reminder, and let's say maybe you had a reminder that was open already or something. It just gets bundled? It just gets bundled together. Ugh. It's buried at the bottom of your list, even though it's the newest thing that just yeah. came in. So your phone like buzzes and you're like, sorry, what was that? And, and you're in the middle of something and, and then you don't do it. And it's like. So it drives me nuts. This is a little bit unrelated, but Twitter, you get Twitter notifications, you click on one and it gets rid of like all of them instead of just the one and it'll like, load Twitter and you need it to go to a specific tweet or someone's account or whatever and it just brings you to like the Twitter homepage then it's like ah oh, it's it's gone good luck oh, finding yeah. it oh yeah i love that one oh. like someone someone mentioned you in a whatever yeah you're yeah. like oh what's this ah, i'll never know okay yeah. cuz now i go to my notification feed and everything's yeah. truncated into each other yep. if, if someone followed me it's bundled with a whole bunch of other people if the, who knows where the message is who knows like what thread it's buried under i have no clue it's so frustrating um so speaking of frustrating oh never mind no we do have our super chats uh, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about uh, I brought up the Google thing, owing people tons of money. Google sued in the UK for 3.2 billion pounds. Whoops. So much. Four million iPhone users in the UK might get 750 pounds or nine, roughly equivalent 925 US dollars each, which is tons, from uh, yeah. Google's illegal data harvesting, which went on from 2011 to February 2019. That is awesome for like a class action settlement. Yeah. Like, imagine yeah. for a second if all of the users harmed really got substantial payments from class actions, how much more deterred against class yeah. actions companies would be. Yeah. Like, if you had to pay an actually reasonable settlement to everyone whose data you leave. Because usually it's like $5. You know? Yep, it's nothing. So it doesn't, it's Or whatever. like who you defrauded by, you know, falsely advertising something or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, they, they were bypassing privacy settings on Apple iPhone handsets between those dates, so for like eight yep. years. Uh, they used data to divide people into categories for advertisements, including ethnic origin, physical and mental health, opinion, sexuality, sexual interests, and social class. Gosh darn, Google. <sighs> Real, real cool, but hopefully everybody gets a payout. So. You know, it's really funny. I, I half expect someone to clip this and then me talking about how glad I am that Microsoft and Google are working together and <laughs> put them together. Well, okay, I almost made a joke when you said that, and yeah. I was like, yeah, telemetry from two sides. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, if my personal data is gonna be out there, we might as well level the playing field well and give it, it to super everyone. Out there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, 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 not gonna, I'm not gonna pull a Justin Trudeau and get like bli blindsided Oof. with you know old pictures. I'm just gonna, Oof. I'm just gonna publish every. I'm gonna make my own site. You know, <laughs> like Linus, Linus's, Linus's, Linus's deepest darkest secrets dot com. I am now worthless dot com. You put everything on there. I am now worthless dot com. What's that? Do you get it? No. Because, like, your data has a value or whatever? Oh. So, like, in a data sense, you are now worth... I'm sure it's... I actually don't know why that would exist. 
Uh, I am now worthless, is what I meant. I am now worthless, because you put all your data out there. So you are of no value data-wise. We haven't done this in a while. Yeah. I am now worthless.com is three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, like it's a t terrible but interesting concept. Also you available just... is IamWorthlessNow.com. <laughs> if you don't catch either of those, you can pick up NowIamWorthless.com for also three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> hey Google, you want my information? Here you go. How Have about... it. Take it. That should just be like. Am I worthless.com is also available. So you can check so the, the if, you're, if all your data is out there already. The world's saddest website. <laughs> now I am worthless.com should just be an image feed of like people from Wall Street bets. Now, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now I am worthless. All right, so last thing is we want to go through some super chats. Uh, Sembo says a portion of this video was sponsored by me. Good job, Sembo. Ah. Uh, email says, hey, enjoying the show, guys. Keep it up. Wondering if it's worth upgrading from a 980 Ti to a 1080 for 120 hertz. No. Uh, is the way Linus pronounces paste a Canada thing or a Linus thing? Paste? 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 What? Sorry, executive. I have no idea what you're talking about. Me neither. Uh, Debug, do you want me to move paste? this a little closer for you? Would, would that, that would be, be better? nice. That would, there would you, we go. That's that, a lot easier, that, actually. Would you like me to? Hey. Are you ever going to buy glasses? Uh, I own them. I don't know where they are. So, okay. Um, <laughs> I can't give too much information because I don't want to give any personally identifiable yeah, information. Yeah, like really no. Don't worry, don't yeah. worry. I got okay. this. But not only do I know for a fact that Luke <laughs> makes enough money to afford glasses. I, I, own, I, own. I also know <laughs> that he has a close acquaintance who literally works in the glasses industry. Yeah. I, they're somewhere. <laughs> I hate. I also them. fact number three. Luke's vision is terrible. Yeah, it's serviceable. <laughs> I can <Serviceable>. legally drive. <laughs> uh, debug. I can see a car. <laughs> debug. Someone needs to invent a little storage container that slots into the seldom used CD drive bay in a case. I'd love a place that exists to store yeah. like screwdrivers, screws, zip ties. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure someone made that at one point. I don't think they're super popular anymore because a lot of computers just don't even have those yeah. things anymore. Eliezer says, when are the new water bottle colors coming? Oh, hey, Nick, you wandered off, eh? Yeah. Um, can, I, can I say that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you, I guess. Should I show them? Well, they're not available yet. Oh, right, we don't have them here. Okay, soon. Very soon, TM. Techmoji. You guys inspired me to pursue computers and now a BS in computer engineering. Freaking awesome. One year left. Keep cool. at it. Yeah. Train spot, thanks. Uh, John Espo wanted to say goodnight. Um, good night to you, Good night. Uh, Justin says, big fan, just got three shirts and love them. Do you know when you'll restock XL CPU shirts? Uh, hey, Nick. Uh, what? Are we restocking XL CPU shirts anytime soon? Yes. Uh, hopefully next week. Hopefully, hopefully. next week. There you hopefully. go. TM. Ryan says, uh, jokes on Intel. I just picked up a 3700X. Indeed. I don't know what this means. What is GLO gang? And will gang be offended? I have no idea what this means. I have a feeling so, we just played into a meme. Sorry, Eduardo. Um, I have no idea. Lego lad play well. Just wondering, why are you selling two server motherboards on your merch store? Because we don't know what else to do with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Adam says, whoa, I finally have a chance to be on Super Chat. Yeah, well, you can be on Super Chat anytime you want. It just costs money, that's all. It's true. I don't know, maybe it's his payday. Ah. Um, Tommy Gunn says, I'd love to see a Mini Gamers 1 CPU, not one MOBO. Or he, he's from Epic. He's from Norway. He oh, might watch VODs. You're right. Uh, so, no spoilers. No spoilers. Total spoilers. Um, I finally got confirmation from AMD's server team that they want to work with us. And so, uh, we might be able to get our hands on a CPU that would be powerful enough to run an entire house oh. worth of computers. Apparently, GLO gang or Glow gang is something to do with rappers and specifically Chief Keef. Chief Keef, a rapper. Okay, cool. Um, Vincente says, "Hey Linus, little trivia. Did you know that Anno is pronounced like Anna? anus in Spanish?" An 
Oh, yeah, but it's not Spanish. People brought that up before. Yeah. Uh, executive says, need more Tyler in the videos. Free idea. Tyler leads Linus playing a community-made character and other LMG staff in a session of D&D. &D. Channel super fun. Yeah, I don't know I don't... if that sounds super fun. Yeah. Uh, Dave says, regarding the leg in Super Mario World on the Alienware OLED, there are tools to eliminate retro leg. Interesting. Retro RGB is a great resource on this. Yeah, I should probably... Um, Oh, I lent you the. Oh, oh, this is uh, uh, Dave from Retro RGB. Okay. Hey. Um, lent you a Virtual Boy recently. Yeah, well, I think we've returned that. I hope so. If not, we'll get it back to you soon. I think they um, shipped it out like. Right I away. humbly request collaborative videos. That would actually be a lot of fun. We don't do a ton of retro gaming content, but I will let you know if anything comes up. Um, and yes, I do need to figure out my, my retro lag situation. I also did just like buy a CRT because I give up. So maybe. <laughs> Just, What'd you uh, get? Which one? Uh, no, nothing special. Okay. I will say though, there's uh, there's one on Craigslist that had my eye if I just felt like spending way too much money. Someone's gonna snag this, I'm sure, now that I'm drawing attention to it. Um, but in my in my searching um, during Scrapyard Wars, I came across uh, a GDM FW900, which is an ultra yeah. or not an ultra wide. It's a widescreen. CRT with BNC inputs. This is basically oh the king. $1,500. Oh my god, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, Virtual Boy's coming out on YouTube tomorrow. Mm. Cool. Uh, what else we got here? Thanks, Chikashi. After Storm, Linus, have you ever used mlocate on Linux to search files? It takes seconds to index billions of files on an SSD and the search is instantaneous. Yeah, probably. Call me when Adobe Premiere is available. I mean, it's always the same, like it's always the same conversation. It's like, yeah, 100% agree. Cool, and, and it's our, beneficial in those situations. And our 10 reasons why Linux is better video is coming. Obviously, but, obviously. But what people don't understand. Sorry, that pissed me off so much. I'm so tilted about this whole situation. I, when that came out, people oh, brought like up 10 my, reasons Windows is better? You yeah, mean? I was oh, like, yeah. oh, this is good. They're doing the iPhone Android thing. We did Mac first. Yeah, Figure and we did out. Mac first. Yeah. It's a series. Come it's on. not supposed to be fair and balanced. Oh my it's goodness. It's supposed to be here are good things. Oh. It's just positivity. And I mean in the Windows one, we even did acknowledge some bad stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Jeez, sorry, that just blah. I got so many messages about that. People just have no clue sometimes and yes. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> Um, you care this much. It's like error, clue not found. But you <laughs> like haven't paid attention to how they do everything ever. I don't, like, come on. Uh, Puneet says, I was the one on your stream the other night spamming the elemental stuff. Sorry. Uh, I, 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 did, I didn't notice. I was busy playing <laughs> video games. Um, Ashton, greetings from Manjaro Linux. Here, have five bucks. Uh, B Gems? Yay, the WAN show. See you guys in the archive tomorrow. You're watching it now! Maybe he caught the end. Digital Realm. Started watching you guys in 2011 as a 14-year-old. That's terrifying. You are now, <laughs> holy crap, you are now 22. You are now an adult. I am now a VoIP infrastructure network engineer. Thanks to you cultivating my interest in IT. P.S. The office networking videos equal cringe. We know. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, Paul says, Risk five and RDNA is the future, and unless Intel comes up with something, th something major, they will, they will suffer an IBM future. IBM's doing all right. Risk architecture has been on the way for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Irving says, watching this, I feel like when I see my mom while she watches her famous people gossip shows and somehow I don't hate it. <laughs> uh, Rajin Taco says, I kind of miss the Tunnel Bear ads. Yeah, they're not coming back anytime soon. Uh, something Ninja, more Google Opinion Awards money. Yeah, I, fa I found out about this recently. Yeah. Opinion Awards. Uh, Timothy says, I built my first server with just knowledge from your videos. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Good job, though. <laughs> Oculus42, thank you. Uh, Fradio3, Elemental T-shirt, go hardcore, all over. What are you even talking about? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. But thank Thanks you. for the two bucks. Uh, Jay Pajappers says, there's software called Search Everything that catalogs everything and has instant search and one button search anywhere in Windows with walks. Good Does to know. It, uh, I shouldn't have to do that, though. Yeah. But and that, is that going to add more than just pressing the start button and typing? Anthony says, motherboard shirt when? I don't know. We have a motherboard water bottle. We should probably do a shirt eventually. But it's kind of hard to That's design gonna, a cool-looking motherboard shirt. Yeah, that sounds difficult. Paul says, go fold. Yes, indeed. Go fold. You could do it like the old, like, you know that play mat? That's a city that everyone had when they were a kid? Mm -hmm. 
You could do it yeah, sort yeah. of like that, where it like looks like a city, but you laid out like a motherboard. Yeah, it might be too, it might too be much. Might be too much. Um, I'm not a good designer. <laughs> Chasm says, you mentioned selling mouse pads in a previous WAN show. Are they coming out soon or no? I need a new one, but I don't want to wait too long. What's our ETA on those? Uh, it's up in the air right now. Yeah, it's up in the air. Don't wait. Yeah. All right. If you need it, just get a different Yeah, one. get a different mouse pad. Get ours will be affordable anyway. Get a, get a cheap one and then get ours like after. Yeah. I think we're going to be around like... Between 20 and 30, probably. Um, wow. Alball says, Massive thanks to LTT for <clears throat> teaching me the PC basics. Um, built my own months ago, Ryzen 2700X, GTX 1070, nice little rig, really happy with it. Awesome. Dallin Law says, What about for costume? Infrared lights and reflector strips that show up on camera but are otherwise invisible. <laughs> what about them indeed? I think they have stuff like that, but I don't understand what the question is. Sim TV, thanks. Uh, Wilf, heard you heard on stream you have a printer on your desk. Why not use Octoprint to have it elsewhere for a silent setup? I don't have anywhere else to put it <laughs> right now, but yes. <laughs> Duly noted, thank you. I really want to put it in my garage, but I'm deeply concerned about the temperature fluctuations, and I, yeah, I, that's, so the reason I have it on my desk, I've had a lot of people give me crap about having it in a room that I occupy. Uh, the reason I have it on my desk is from when I put all of my machines over in the side closet, I put um, a ventilation fan into that room. So what I do when I'm printing is I crack the window in the room and I open up that door so I have airflow coming right across the printer and out the door, basically. The, like, thick, rough, filtered intake fan thing that is here would also be a good idea. I haven't seen your setup. I don't yeah. know. But those things are pretty legit. I don't print that often, and I tend to not go in that room while I'm printing. Okay. I just don't really have anywhere else temperature controlled that's out of the way to put it. Right. I'm not going to complain because I have an amazing house, but I kind of wish I had a bigger house. <laughs> I have three kids. <laughs> they take up a lot of space. Sure, man. I don't even want to hear your whining. Look, your, your limited living space is voluntary. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Because I wasn't you are comparing a, a to myself. Cheap... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I'm completely okay with that. I'm not comparing to myself. I'm just saying. Because because you are a c-word. You a could cheap. like build an addition. Whoa. A cheap. A cheap. Yeah. You could also cheap, say that cheap, you're. Cheap, cheap. You could also say that you're a cheap. Yeah, I'm pretty cheap too, but not about certain things. Not about certain things. When it comes to camera equipment, I'm pretty sure that I don't. When it I comes don't. to your business, you're not. When it comes to the business, not cheap. When it comes uh, to you personally, you're definitely cheap. And Zach is says, is AMD coming back? From where? They're back. Yeah. They're back, baby. Yeah. Thanks, Matthew. I was gonna say like, yeah, but they're they're yeah, they're kind of uh, here. Jay says I just checked the 3900X. It's still 473 pounds in the UK. We're looking at US Apparently numbers. No problem. Yeah, US numbers. Um, okay, what else we got? Uh, Robert Mail says people shouldn't drink that much milk. R slash never broke a bone would like to have a word with you. Okay, yeah, milk is not, that's, okay, calcium. Hey! It's probably, it's probably a joke <laughs> subreddit. Oh, is it? It's prob probably. That nope. sounds like a joke. I am curious. <laughs> For those who are safe. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> is it like bone apple? Yeah, it's a joke. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. You know what? We're, we're going to experience this subreddit together. <laughs> Okay, there's a pretty good one. Don't get demonetized. <laughs> For those who are safe on Reddit, hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to show just yet. Okay, so this isn't the most appropriate. This but skeletal really funny. thinks you are cool and have good bones. <laughs> there's okay. The, <laughs> wow. <laughs> the next one after the ad. <laughs> oh man. Good lord. Oh man. Don't, what it, <laughs> you've been visited by the dairy dictator. He will grant you enough calcium for Spooktober. No need to updo. What am I even looking at? <laughs> there's, there's, I like the next one. Bones win halves milk. <laughs> like, what the? Oh my god. Okay. Um, That's yeah. fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, I think we're just about done here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's just see if we've got a couple other ones. Innocuous remarks says, Am I stupid for considering a pre built? No, of course not. Some people like <laughs> got stuff to do. 
<laughs> don't feel like building a computer. It's all good. Uh, are we going to review OnePlus TV from RanRB? Uh, we're planning to, yes. Uh, Zion says Linus needs a tape delay to not maybe leak stuff. Yeah, probably. Uh, Detail says, in theory, in the future, if I were to apply for a job at LTT, do I absolutely need a Canadian work permit? You betcha. And Bob Barry says... It applies for Floatplane as well. Are you going to have a sale on underwear soon? I'm a poor college student and need a new pair. They're well, what premium. would be a really good idea would be not blowing $5 on a super chat <laughs> to ask me about putting underwear on sale... But I'll tell you what, Bob, if you can send to our email, which is publicly facing, if you're not smart enough to find it, then I don't feel bad for you. We'll give you exactly If you can send off. evidence that you are, in fact, that Bob Barry, I will personally give you a special deal on three packs of underwear so you will have a full week's supply, all right? And guys, don't send me super chats like this all the time. I will ignore them. This is just because this has never happened before. We're just doing something special for our buddy Bob Barry over here, okay? <laughs> But look, poor college student who wastes too much money on Super Chats. Clearly, <laughs> you have a lot to learn. It's good you're in college. We just want to help you out. Okay, take you're in a, a finance management. You're in a bad situation. Yeah, you need to go take some finance courses. Um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get you a hookup. All right, yeah. all right, Bob Barry. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Peace yeah. out, guys. Media Thanks for watching. Will be back soon. Sorry. Media Mondays will be back. Oh, Media yeah. Mondays will be back soon. Oh yeah, our restock's coming, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. See you Bye. next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. stupid a little while ago. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, great too. I haven't seen that, but I love the name. It's a good one.